What is good? We're back. We need to address the state of the running back. Last week, we did some wide receiver rankings. Today, we're going to talk about some running back rankings. We're into week five, uh, but we are getting a ton of questions about the running backs and the state of the running backs. And so, yes, we're going to have a rankings discussion of some sort. I don't want to get too crazy five weeks into Dynasty. Uh, but we're going to use it as a, a platform to talk about these guys and some different um, talking points, questions, concerns that some people have and the general sense of how we're looking at it right now. So we got Big Co over here. We've got Jason on the ones and twos. I'm Casey Myers, and we are the FFD about to get into it. Get into the running back, dude. All right. So right off the rip, we're going to hit it up with tier one okay in my tier one right now and then we're going to talk about these and we're going to be moving some and building tiers as we go in a lot of on some of this year i'm not sure if we're going to get to 12 it's kind of weird when you get to like 18 ish you kind of i feel like there's a big block there and we'll discuss but the top tier right now you know Bijan, breeze gibbs all those guys were in the in the talks amongst uh the running backs all off season and and for me right now it's looking like gibbs Bijan, breeze and I'm putting Kyron Williams in there. And Boom. Kyron Williams might just be at the top of that list. Dynasty RB motherfucking one. <laughs> Here it is. You know? Yeah, that's that's going to get you in the comments. There's no doubt about it. Kyron's production and attempts and his touchdowns and his snap share are, yeah. you know, he's in an elite situation. Yeah, I mean, he's at 84.8%. The next highest guy for snap share, team snap share, is Saquon Barkley with 79.6%. So that's a big jump. And that's a huge jump. Below those guys is 75 and 74%. So right. between him and the third guy, there's almost a 10% gap. Yeah, dominant. Right? And, you know, hey, some may say that's not the best for Kyron long term. And, and hey, we're going to look at Dynasty in a three-year window anyway, and then nobody likes the running backs regardless and they're saying hey all, all i care about is these three years anyway so if we're talking about that kyron's got one more year left on his deal and everyone wanted to make sure that he was going to be replaced this year but no 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 he's not being replaced and all the rams have done is get exponentially more hurt right and worse and he just keeps doing what he's doing yeah he's the only player last year who came anywhere near what cmc was doing at a consistent basis and he's right i'm mean, not putting quite those numbers up this year their offensive line is hurt. Yep. Their top their top receivers are hurt. All of them. You know, their defense is banged up. And and if all Kyron's one. doing is just out here just absolutely running this team, which is what we said in the offseason of, of I just can't understand why they would replace this guy when he was the engine that did this. And it's not a slight to Blake Corum, and it's never been a slight to Blake Corum. I just didn't know why you would make this huge fundamental change for no reason. For something that was working at a high rate. Right, when which I, stranger things have happened. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, so I, I just said Kyron Williams is in an elite situation. Normally, that would mean your offensive line spectacular. You got two awesome wide receivers mm-hmm. to make the defense back up, you know. What I mean by that is his head coach loves him, mm-hmm. and he's got a dynamic head coach and probably top two, top three offensive-minded head coach in the league who has complete control of the entire franchise, and there's no owner telling him what to do. There's no, no – he is the offensive coordinator, you know. Mm-hmm. So Kyron Williams, Sean McVay, they're like best friends. They probably golf together, you know, yeah. probably hang out at the pool together. He's his head coach's – Best friend on the football field, right there beside Matt Stafford. He's on the field every freaking snap. That's what I mean by elite situation. That's all you could ask for out of your running back. Now, I don't necessarily think I would put him in the same tier as Brees Hall, Bijan, and Jameer Gibbs, but I don't really have a lot to argue. I don't have a lot to stand on to make an argument, not? you know, because he's doing all the things that you just said. He's doing it without getting big push up front he's he was doing at, it without the defense respecting the wide receivers that are on the field in front of him so i mean I, I i really can't make a great argument other than those other three guys are just thoroughbreds yeah kyron williams is getting stuff done with his mind vision patience that type of stuff and he's a you know he's, he's just plowing right through and breaking he just tackles didn't test like, well he's still he, a really that's good what i mean play, you like know? he's not a thoroughbred but like he's got kind of like a he's got a dalvin cook set of eyes you know, he knows where to be. He's a step early every time. Good for Kyron. He finishes with power. Overachiever. 
Good for Kyron. <laughs> uh, but no, you know, last year it was like oh, in 21 point something points per game. Right now he's averaging 19.6 points per game. He's got 98.1 fantasy points per game. Dude, or this, fantasy points in uh, this year, the season. you might as well set 30 points a game. Right. Yeah. If you got a running back, you got a running back that's, or averaging 19 points a game right now, like that's, you might as well just said 30 points a that, game. That's what I'm saying. Every team that I have that I, you know, which I have, I had a lot of Kyron on the rebuilders. I, I sold, you know, first and a third was kind of my standard what, by the end of the season, what I was trying to get for him. Yep. I sold him in another league that was kind of rebuilding for Godwin and a two way too cheap. Right. Yeah. At, at that it's, point. But I, it's fine. I can understand it's it. Fine. I can understand it. Uh, that was mid season, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I kept them everywhere else, and all those teams are three and one, mm-hmm. top of the points four. Right. A- and Kyron is a huge part of that. Of Every course. week, it's set it and forget it. Kyron just does his thing, and I made sure that I went and got Blake Corum in, in almost every one of those leagues if I could. Yeah. Right. Why, why wouldn't you? Paid a little extra, got Corum, so I'm I feel okay about that. Corum got some snaps. Unfortunately, got turned away at the goal line here twice, and then Kyron came in <laughs> and got it and done. got it done. So. But you know. unless you have some more Kyron, I was just going <laughs> to let you got more good things to say about Kyron. Get out of the way because I do. No, no, <laughs> no. I'm, I don't I'm not going to go any more crazy with Kyron. Well, I'm just I'm putting him in there because I don't I don't know how we can keep him out at this point. And there's just look, if it's if he's not going to be a Ram after next year, that's fine. Which, you know, maybe they don't. That would be your problem. That's that's your only problem. If if McVay would just tell me that I got another 12 months of this on top of that, I can understand and I can work around it. Like if Kyron leaves McVay, you, unless you get lucky and, you know, the Niners pick him up. I mean, like, half the league's running that scheme anyway right well, now. So true. <laughs> you just got to go to a, a you know right. a competent system, which, yeah. I mean, Jesus, how much worse could it get than what's going on for the Rams right now outside of Stafford and, and, and McVay? But I'm, I'm putting him in there because he's scoring points. And he, like you said, he might not be that, oh, my God, guy. But all he does week after week in your fantasy lineup is go, oh, my God, yeah. this is fan fantastic this is true um, this is true but so the other three guys right in this here because the Kyron, I, it's great that we got into Kyron immediately because you have been singing his praises beating the drum for him for you know three years now the first two didn't work out last year was amazing and really first with, year didn't work out I, well, think, well, I don't think it was two years and then really with the off season, like you said because everybody decided that Kyron wasn't good and he was going to take a back seat and you're like no 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 so this is good we got into him immediately but well, I mean, I think you it brings, got 10 more minutes on why Kyron's awesome. No, but I think just, that brings us into <laughs> like how know, much time you got, buddy. Just because Kyron didn't work out right away. OK, perfect. I, you know, patience is a virtue in this game. Mm-hmm. And I've, 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 I don't know whose account it was. It was a big account, 40, 50,000 follower account. And he said, you know, basically, it's crazy that you have to have patience in a game that's built around patience. Yep. You yep. know, and. You know, then you went down and like the first comment was like, the guys who have patience are the guys who are always losing. And it's like, well, Bo, that ain't what he meant. Like, <laughs> he's like, you need, to be, you need to be active. And it's like, yes, of course you need to be active. But being patient and being active, are, you know, are not mutually exclusive. Well said. Right. It's yeah. it's, it's you, an open relationship. You don't. I'm not just going to go sell Chiron for pennies on the dollar if I believe in Chiron. Yeah. You know, I'm not just going to be like, oh, I'll just throw like that's what I try to do. I try to go in my deals and being active. I try to go by the Kyron Williams, the Jalen Tolberts, you know, mm-hmm. uh, of the world and just get those throw ins in a deal. Keaton Mitchell was a guy I was throwing in it, trying to get every, any deal that the guy. I keep, let me get him. Got me a real nice Josh Downs and a throw in over the summer. Right. You just beautiful. just trying to get little bits and pieces. But, you know, we are fielding so many questions about Brees Hall and Bijan Robinson. And I just. Those guys, you shouldn't even have to talk about patience with because Kyron Williams is a completely different ball game. Yeah, the expectations. That's what I was thinking immediately when you kind of started to get into that area. Like the expectations on Kyron were nothing. He came out and exploded when he got his chance. Hey, guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. One person hit me up and said, I'm tired of waiting on Brees Hall. And then we got in a discussion. It's like I got Brees Hall on a handful of teams, but, you know, this time of the year it's crazy, and I didn't even realize how good he was the first three weeks. You know, 18, 24, 18, something like that. Yeah. You quoted me th- the first three weeks, and then the last two weeks were not great. And then Bijan has been 
decent, not stellar at all, but uh, in the situation where you have, we've talked about the, the Falcons last week. We don't have to regurgitate that entire top operation, but start out with, you know, three tough defenses and a quarterback who's got a bad foot. And so there's just a lot going on there. And, yeah. and then we saw the offense explode and Bijan didn't get everything that you would like. If they scored 38 points, you would think Bijan did well and he didn't do great. Right. He's one of the best, right? right? He's one of the best running backs in the league. He's for me, I got Brees. I got Brees one. I had I, I had Brees and Bijan kind of fifty fifty at one before. Mm-hmm. I got Brees one because he gets, he's got that uh, line up outside get thrown a go ball potential. You know that that was kind of what what happened week two. They you know, that was a big mm-hmm. you know talking point. Brees told Brees told Aaron Rodgers, hey, if I go out here and there's a linebacker on me, just throw the go. And he threw it, and it was a touchdown. So obviously the commentators had to talk. Hey, hey, that's what they were talking about all week, you know. Yeah. So the Brees Hall like that—that that was a big deal. And then of course you know you got two weeks of stinkers for the Jets offense. But I, right. I you know, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, Gibbs, absolute you know, studs. You, you got, got to be patient sometimes, right? You got you know I'm sick of Brees Hall. I'm wait, sick of waiting on Brees Hall. He had three elite games, right? And then you know a slot fest against Denver, which yeah, nobody and did anything. down rain. Denver's got a pretty good defense. All of a sudden, and Denver's then you're got in the rain. The top in the, in the league, you know. And then this last week, you're in London on a weird time zone playing another good defense, and they could not get the run game going. It'd be one thing if we were out here and all of a sudden, you know. Uh, Braylon Allen was getting 20 carries and, and six six attempts, six pass catches a game, but that's not what's going on. Brees Hall is still at 78%, 74.1%, which is seventh overall in, in snap percentage. Now, yeah, right. Still, still, still um, you know, 57.5% in, in attempt percentage, which is, you know, a, a pretty decent number. Now, they, they unexpected to have such a good backup at this point. Of course. Um, Fantastic but for him is longevity and, if, and if, in general. Well, sure. I, that's fine with me. Every back pretty much should have one. But and if you, you slide five Garrett Wilson targets over to Brees Hall this week and he could still have another good game. Or if, if either him, Brees or Bijan score a touchdown in any one of those games. Right. We're good here. Right. It's fine. Brees Hall. The biggest problem he has is the fact that Aaron Rodgers is you know, quote unquote, stagnant the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, you're, you're going to stagnant in the rain against Denver. All of a sudden, looks a lot better than it did. Yeah. And you played against Brian Flores the next week. So mm-hmm. those two things are almost excusable, except for the fact that now we're getting dumped on. Like they're dumping the buckets out for Aaron Rodgers doesn't want any motion, et cetera, et cetera. And it is like the common theme in all the good offenses. So it's like when it's not going good. That's a really yeah. good thing to hang your hat on to uh, complain about. Right. So we have the Aaron Rodgers complaints coming through right now, and and I understand it, especially when you got that defensive end Van Ginkle jumping up, catching a pass Ooh. in front and t- touchdown. Right. It's like this is what they saw on film because this is what Aaron Rodgers does every single time. So there's a little bit of burnout on Aaron Rodgers' offense. Then he almost right now. comes back and wins the fucking game. <laughs> then like, he almost takes him. I mean, field. Gilmore didn't even know, he he just I don't, he didn't even kind know he picked it off. Down I think at it. first he was like, yeah. oh shit, I got it. Yeah, it was a terrible um, throw. It that wasn't was it wasn't throw. good. Wasn't good. All right. So patience on Brees and Bijan. And I, honestly, it's, we shouldn't have to tell you this, but don't sell those guys cheap. I wouldn't sell them even for an average bargain at this point. Dude, these so, trades that I'm seeing on Dynasty Daddy are ridiculous. Like, right. So a bunch of two firsts for Bijan. I'll give you two firsts all day. Well, this is that, ridiculous. Like, that's the other side of that. It's like A, don't do that. B, go go get buy it. low now. Go do the Might buying. Be the title. Go do the buying. It's it, like special Brees Hall, Bijan, like you you're it's an opportunity. You should be you thankful. Don't usually get look if you if you, you want to be thankful to if, get these two thoroughbreds on the cheap. Now, is it like uh Mark Andrews right now? This year, is he going to turn around? Probably not. Is Brees Hall? He's not going to turn around probably to the extent of what, a tight end one, two, or three. Yeah, but he's yeah. probably going to be a decent tight end gonna, but by saying, the end of the year. Sure, but I'm saying like right when I say right now, like when in the next couple of weeks is is Andrews going to start getting ten catches a game, ten targets a game? Probably not. That's the way that they got they got mm-hmm. you know Derrick Henry. The offense is different. Like is Brees Hall going to come out here and be electric next week? I'm I'm not sure. But if I I'm definitely going to try to buy him before he gets another chance to be electric. Yeah. Because you why not? And yeah, you don't get opportunities to buy. You got to like take these. a chance. And right. That's the situation. Whatever you want to put Kyron up at one because the points he's scoring. I can't argue with that. Just the wit went and there was some plays where Bijan should have had a bunch more points. Stupid plays that got called back. Right. Good the, point. The way these dudes move. The just yeah. the movement skills that they have, the bendy, curvy, linear movement, the acceleration. Both of them have, have hands. You could put both of Bijan them excellent and run the yeah. go route. I mean, yeah. he, he's running these, you know, that oh, Indiana route. What is it? The Texas, Texas route. route. Angle, I mean, whatever. it's just incredible the way Indiana. these guys move, and it hasn't come to fruition. <laughs> and you're, Western Iowa, you're able to have a, a buying opportunity right now. 
you got to go send some offers and do not be selling these dudes for a first and a third or, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, of two firsts or yeah, no, it's <laughs> crazy. stupid. And, and, and Gibbs is, you know, if you want like that, that's the move. If you, if you really you feel like you want to get out Gibbs? and you want to go down to Gibbs, Fine. which is not a go down to me really at all outside that he shares the backfield a little heavier right. than everybody else. That's fine. Uh, whatever. That's what you want to do. Gibbs has been great. Mm-hmm. I had Gibbs just outside those Brees well, and Bijan to start this season off, and now there's no way we're good. But here's but here's how it's really going to go, though. If you offer the guy Brees Hall to try to get his Gibbs, he's going to tell you no. Don't let that emotionally confuse you and then go trade Brees or Bijan cheaper because you got turned down for Jameer Gibbs. Like, you don't get confused. You still like girls. It's not right, right, right. <laughs> you may not be able to trade Brees or Bijan for Gibbs right now. They're, that's fine. That's, just I'm don't. just saying, that's, if, that's what I'm, if that's what we're doing, that's like the only acceptable that's where you're trade going. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or going, you know, going to get like a Kenneth Walker and a huge plus. All right, let's get let's get that further down the line here. Just felt like we needed a long. I've just been we feeling a lot of stuff about that. So let's. We let's, know there are problems out there because we're getting the questions right. about it. All right. So as I move down here, uh, you know, we have a, we have a bunch of different routes you can go, and there's a bunch of confusion. It's like puberty it, through the next, <laughs> you know, however many guys. And for me, the next set is JT. I know we got the ankle. That's so Jonathan Taylor. For Jonathan Taylor. So, just to- so if you're worried about the ankle and you're an injury purist, which I don't, I don't know what you're doing at this point. How you even play this game? <laughs> you haven't been playing very long. Uh, you know, Run I guess you could not say Jonathan Taylor, but he's been excellent. I, I love where they're going. Give me Jonathan Taylor. I'm going Saquon Barkley, a little or on the older side, but like a year younger than all the rest of the olds. And just in an elite situation, and <laughs> you're a little younger than all the other olds, <laughs> right? You know, Mixon is kind of in between everybody, and then Kamara, Henry, right. Jones, Connor, right. they're all in that 29 30 area. Yep. But what that is showing us is that we had this huge movement of all the nerds doing age curves and all this other shit that tells you that you got to get out. You know, they tell you 27, you got to get out. And it's like, Bo, there are like, Four or five, and Mixon would be probably, I think, the fifth one right now of 29-year-old guys who are in the top 10 of running back scoring and look fan-fucking-tastic doing so. Yeah. And if Christian McCaffrey was healthy, which I, I get that's the whole thing, yep. you know, he'd be right in there. And and Christian McCaffrey may never, never give us another down out of football. He gave you so many great seasons. Mm-hmm. And... He could give you four more. He might give you four more if he misses this whole season. Right. We don't know. He come back, rattle off a couple. Good so ones. I'm fine with keeping Saquon Barkley there. He's in an elite situation mm-hmm. and he looks fantastic doing so. Mm-hmm. Now he's been injured and whatever. And now another big mover here. I'm going Kenny three sticks in the next tier. Earned it. Earned I just it. when when you watch this offense operate now this past week, I don't know what the Seahawks were doing, but they ran it. I think a combined like nine times against the G-men. Yeah. But Kenny Walker had eight targets and caught seven of them, you know. Yeah. So, thought he couldn't catch. Not, not the, not what you're gonna see week to week from the Kenny Walker usage and how they're gonna use him. Sure. Uh, but he's been outstanding when out there. Now again, maybe a little banged up, maybe a little too banged up for your likings. His explosive run rate is near the top. His explosive run percentage out of any running back that has more than like 30 attempts is 13.5%, which is ridiculous. Right. Tank Bigsby is the only other guy. The other one would be Tank Bigsby. With over 30 attempts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's basically the uh, explosive run percentage is the percentage of runs that go for 15 yards or more. Right. Mm -hmm. And and Kenny is, is putting those up and he's been banged up. But man, when he is out there, this offense is catered and perfect. For what Kenny does, and they love some Kenny Walker over there in Seattle with the new offense that they're running. And don't get it twisted; this is a new OC, right? He's sure. never he's never done this before, which is kind. Of, Bijan's the same way. Like this is a brand new. This guy's never. That guy's just figuring things out to be on his own over there and calling plays. He was a pass game coordinator or a, a, a quarterbacks coach or whatever was going on. It, but. Whatever was going on, McVay was the guy over there. Right. Like, you right. know what I mean? He was second in command at least. Right. So you're figuring some things out. Kenny Walker's guys coming from the college ranks, mm-hmm. coming from Washington. They run a pro style thing. I'm not making excuses for him. He's been awesome. Yeah. But so I'm putting Kenny Walker in there. I think he's earned it. He's he's putting up elite fantasy points. He's he's putting down explosive runs. Um, and best part about it is Sharps bolts right on. Yeah. You know, you can go get you can go get you some Sharps after you know, it, it comes back down and Kenny's out there and, and you can pay a little bit and you got a good, you know, you know, if, if Ken misses time, you got sharps. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. That's my next tier. And that's the end of the next tier. And I, so I think for I got me, a lot of those same guys. I just, I, I can't, I can't not have a chan up there. 
Yeah, um, I got H.N. in the next tier. I got H.N. in that same idea just because, like, you know, the first two weeks of the year when the offense when, – That's fair. When, when, had, when he had a quarterback, yeah. he was catching balls too. Obviously, his run rate was da- was going down, but, like, he was crushing it. And so I, I, I'm, I don't want to forget that H.N. was a monster. Now, the offense for the Dolphins is completely, like, non-existent right now. And H.N. just got knocked out with a concussion. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's – pretty much zero offense going on for the Dolphins and they need a fix and I don't know when or if it's going to happen in the next couple weeks and it may not happen all year if Tua comes back or not so I just dynasty wise if this was two weeks ago you know HM would have been that's that's kind of the ebbs and the flow like you're talking about the patience of everything like today like nobody wants anything to do with basically anybody on the Dolphins right but after week two they were like yeah, oh, A Chan you know, was putting up elite A-chan numbers. So was, I'm, I'm, I got him yeah. a tier down, but top of that list for sure. Yeah. Uh, real quick, back to Kenny Walker. 0.38 missed tackles force per attempt. That's number one. Got it. He's got all the carries inside the five. There you go. Out there, so 100. percent So mm-hmm. all, all all the good stuff trending up. Yards after contact per attempt 3.27, which is a, a very very strong number. You know, a lot of the other guys that have anywhere near that are guys with lower, mm-hmm. you know, attempts. Attempts. So. Kenny's doing his thing, but all right. So my next tier after that, I'm going Jacob. I'm going A Chan Jacobs, and then I got a big mover right here. I'm going Brian Robinson up up in here. I get it, bro. I'm keeping Travis Etienne in here. Mm-hmm. I'm going James Cook, and I'm gonna throw Pacheco in the end of this one here. Mm-hmm. I've been low on Pacheco, and, and really to me, I want to throw Jonathan Brooks in here. Oh yeah, but I want to. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, okay. But um, yeah, I can understand the Pacheco. Like you see the loss in the Chiefs' offense without him. Right, right. So you you could see the difference. Like it's not, and he'd like, become a good receiver. It was getting there for sure. And so like you see, especially like a Patrick Mahomes type offense, and what we really thought they could be this year until they started dropping like flies out there around him. But like you see something like that where you're like, all right, well Pacheco goes out, next man up. It wasn't next man up. You know, and then the next man came in and it wasn't next man up either. They're trying and then they bring in Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt's doing a little something, something, but he's not Pacheco. And so I, I get it. There's a little dynasty value there with Pacheco. We Pacheco talked about is, it coming into the year. Pacheco's uh, target percentage was num- number two in the league. Nice. Before 15.1 percent. Yeah. Before he, and obviously it's only two games. Yep. Yep. Uh, but still, he was he was imagine what would be going on right now if you mm-hmm. had Pacheco right, without in those there wide with, receivers. With yeah. You're down wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's going to be a little older when he gets a second, but he's 25. He's going to need a second contract, and, and why why not the Chiefs signing him again? That's why it, it's a team friendly deal both ways, right? I mean, it makes complete sense that Pacheco would be, you know, hey, I'm going to stay with the the Chiefs and keep collecting rings, but at the same time, he's a running back, so he should probably go get the most money possible. But he's, you know, like he's part of the family, so yeah. I, I could definitely see them staying together, and, and I, you know, for the football fan in me, it's, I I hope they do. Yeah. So I, I think Jacobs is in here. I don't think there's a ton of explanation there for me. Buy low on Jacobs. If well, anybody's. I, think he's, I think he's top three in attempts on a good right. offense. Right. They have obviously the quarterback got hurt, took a couple weeks off. He's back. They just went in and, and beat the Rams. And I just I feel like that there's a lot of upside on that offense that we haven't seen because of the uh, the, the yeah, quarterback and, and injury and this just, and that. Yeah, they just they, they also seem just to beat off the Packers offense in general just seems a, a, a beat off here and they're dealing with injuries all around and, and um, Love's been injured. So I, I, I love Jacobs. I think he's a good player. He's proven that he can be a, a top asset in the running game there. Should be some positive touchdown regression coming. And, and yeah, no really, doubt. really, I wanted to, you know, Travis Etienne, I know everybody hates him right now, but it's just too good of a player for me to fade. I'd, I'd be buying low on Etienne. He's not going to be a Jaguar next year, mm-hmm. uh, which we got movies to make on the next one. We're going to talk some Tank Bigsby. So Etienne stays in here. The success rate from a from a tweet from Marcus Mosher had him at like seventh in success rate or something along those lines. I'll look that up while we're, while we're talking here. He's been up, too. Um, he hasn't been quite right. And the Jags just are... Just everything's just place. wrong. It's everything they won because everyone want Peterson out right of there. So let's talk about Brian Robinson for a second. Let me get Josh Jacobs. Okay, go ahead. Let me fit. So what does touchdown regression mean? Right. Positive uh, so, touchdown regression. So it means it's he, going up. Here, here's what that means right now. So Josh Jacobs has 90 carries. He's surrounded by, he's got only three people have more. Kyron, Derek Henry, Jordan Mason. Right. He's got 90. Kyron and Henry both have 95. Jordan Mason has 105. You think 
the Niners, the Ravens, the Rams, and the Packers are all really good offenses. Obviously, we talked about Kyron and the Rams, and they have all their other players are hurt. Kyron's up here. Josh Jacobs is averaging four and a half carry. It's better than Kyron, but Kyron's got the entire defensive look defense looking at him right now. Sure, Mason is five and five point one. He's on the best running scheme in the league with the Niners. Derrick Henry's averaging six point oh, but he's got an eighty five yard run under his belt already. So that's going to bump, bump that up. And a, and a 50 yarder. Plays. And a 50. It, that's, that's all he does is he's making money, making big plays. But I say that How to say. How easy is it for him over there? Wow. You know, Mason's got three touchdowns. Henry's got six. Kyron's got six. Jacobs has one. So he's, uh, they're, all, they're all in the same kind of area of, of attempts. They're all in the same kind of area of yards, except for, um, you know, Jordan Mason and Henry have more yards because they're, on, you know, on that type of offense. And. They didn't have to deal with two weeks of not having their quarterback. Uh, that's what happens when, you know, your quarterback goes out and your backup quarterback's in and the defense condenses and Josh Jacobs has to deal with it. Well, you know, 90 carries, one touchdown. I, that, I got a feeling that that regresses. So that's the Josh Jacobs hate. Pro- progresses. Right, exactly. I've been saying or that for years. Or positively regresses. So, you know, Josh Jacobs got all the hate after that one game where he didn't do anything in the first half. People mm-hmm. stopped watching because he crushed it in the second mm-hmm. half. Was that the first game of the year? Mm-hmm. You know, Remember, first, yeah. first game of the year, he couldn't do anything in the first half. Second half, he had like eight carries for 78 yards or something. Couldn't be tackled. And so I just feel like Josh Jacobs is, is going to come on strong in the next couple of weeks, get the quarterback in there feeling better, let that thing start humming a little bit for the pa- Packers. And I just feel like their bigger games are to come for Josh Jacobs. The you know, you the- were about to get into Brian Robinson. I just needed to say, no, that, I- you know. I love it. Especially like there's a lot of regression talk here and there and nobody ever really stops to talk about it. The so. mean of the dependent variable will tend to increase here. Positive <laughs> regression. Nerds. Right. <laughs> Shout out to the nerds though. You guys are doing great work. They're fun. Do you fun have a MySpace page? Nah, man. I fuck girls. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to, uh, what is it? Funny people? Go check um, out So Brian Robinson, let's talk about him. And the, uh, the Marcus Mosher tweet, ETN was sixth in success rate. Uh, which is a conglomerate statistic of a bunch of different... A composite, if you will. Which means he's good. Which I don't trust it that much, but it's good for Travis Etienne. When it supports my case. It's good for my case, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But Brian Robinson right now is on a very, very interesting team that's super-duper rush-heavy. Yep. And they've got a good running quarterback who's, you know... Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. And they're scoring a ton of rushing touchdowns now. There will probably be some regression at some point. Negative. Some actual regression. Right. But he looks great out there doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's now, now these guys are being tied together as an offense. This guy had 18 yards and two touchdowns. He killed me this week. He, ridiculous. He came, in, two touchdowns. came into this week very questionable and banged up. And then they got a big lead and then he, he, got, he went out. But he's been really solid all throughout. He was very good in the back half of last season. He's an underrated pass catcher. Yep. The, the ghost of Eckler is out there playing pretty well. Um, mm-hmm. pretty and, well and been banged up but it's a good one two combo there but this guy i think is the future of the commander's offense alongside Jaden daniels now i'm gonna give Jaden daniels all the love in the world uh and and give him his flowers but you know i think there will be some times Don't where regression where the commanders are gonna have have some tough sled they haven't really had tough sledding for the last four games you know bucks got him week one i believe mm-hmm. and then you know matchups were yeah, favorable, but still, Jane Daniels doing his thing. You, you got a couple of tougher games. You get in division, Philly, Dallas, Steelers, I think there are on the schedule. I Baltimore think they, next they got week. Chicago coming up, Baltimore, some good defenses with, right. with guys who can scheme a defense against kind of what you're doing. I will say to me, when I watch it, it's a lot of fun. It does look a little vanilla from what the, it's just really hard to guard. You're having to guard every blade of grass right now. Sure. And right. And then, and then they get you over the top and you, they just break you right mm-hmm. at this point. Now, Cliff's done this before. Right. Starts out hot. And then it could get a little stale potentially. But regardless, I still think the running game stays strong with whatever they're doing. You know, there might be some games. But Brian Robinson, to me, has made a huge ascension and is probably one of the biggest risers. And I I feel like is is just going to continue to grow and get stronger with this attack as we move forward. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I took every chance I could to say that I was going to dodge Jaden Daniels in the rookie drafts and uh, in the uh, startup drafts. I uh, didn't want to get in on the young quarterback and, and lose my equity. And, you, dude, he's amazing. He's, it, like, as vanilla as some of the offense is, there's still this ability for him to be 
very composed mm-hmm. and and moving side mm-hmm. to side on the field with his head down, uh, head up, looking. You know, and when he needs to run, he runs. What I didn't know, he's especially like after the preseason stuff when I was talking about his, like even week one, like his average depth of target on his throws like week five one yards. was zero yeah, yeah. because he had threw so many behind the line. When he did throw it a past the line of scrimmage, they negated that. They came out to a zero average. And after week one, I was like, dude, that was a zero average. What has happened is he's shown me multiple throws 15, 20 yards downfield in the middle of the field. Mm -hmm. Not just the 40-yarder downfield that translated from college. Well, we were wondering if it would. It did. The 50-yard bomb in the bread basket, that translated. But he's shown me a handful of throws 15 yards down the field in the middle of the field where a lot of young quarterbacks don't want to throw it. And then when you get add in the legs and the fact, like you said, they got to guard every blade of grass against him because he can run, but not only can he run, but he can sprint out to the side, stretch the defense out, mm. and then find a the guy. Right. So like it is a perfect combination right now of mobile quarterback who will would rather pass, and we didn't like there was these stats coming into the year, and it was it basically it was a Justin Fields stat too. It was like pass attempts that actually were pass attempts Mm -hmm. nope like you drop back to pass and either a you took off and ran or you got sacked Mm -hmm. and the percentage of that and with Jaden daniels in college was high and that's a very high percentage that justin field has had in his career Mm -hmm. the the drop back that was supposed to be a throw but he either got sacked because justin fields takes a lot of sacks or he takes off and runs because Justin Fields first first read I'm gone type situation. Jaden Reed's percentages weren't great in college for that metric. Daniels, good yeah, it's amazing right now. Like what you know, like he's Kingsbury it, has started out hot before and faded whatever. Like there are so many spots where I wish I could go back and be like I didn't say that about Jaden Daniels. Because yeah. this dude is balling well, out. You, you mitigate some risk for sure. And you looked at the supporting cast that he had in college. It's like, well, is he just a product of that? Or are they a product of him? And now they're all right. balling out. So well, why aren't they better know. in college altogether? LSU just pumping out prospects. What's been so impressive about Jaden D- Daniels is the decision making. Mm-hmm. He just looks so poised. He's he's makes every right read. You not know, he doesn't it. he's not, not forced. He's it. letting the game come to him. It's not like it's slow. He's not having to get better every week to just kind of you know coexist he's he looks in charge he looks in command he's evolving at the same time and when he takes off it's electric he slides from time to time you know sometimes he gets a little aggressive when he sees that end zone he can't help himself but he does slide which i love to see that you know you need to do that yeah shit. And get down and just every decision he's making is just looks looks correct to bring it right. back to running back talk here sorry they, <laughs> they, you know the all those things are helping to extend drives and they haven't been punting a ton they're staying yeah. on the field you know, will that dry up at some point? Uh, naturally, I think it will ebb and flow a little. Uh, but, Chris. you know, you're, he, they're getting them in situations where they're moving the sticks, keeping guys on the field and getting down in the red area uh, where Brian Robinson could score. Brian Robinson could catch pass out of the backfield. This is a run kind of a run first offense with some shots. The, the offense will evolve, I believe, sure. as things go. It has to. It has. And, or, and there, or, there will be weeks where, you know, Jaden Daniels keeping you on the field and not punting is fantastic, but also he steals the rushing touchdowns. Mm-hmm. He's he's done that a couple of times, right. and Robinson's still getting because you if you're not punting and you're moving down there into the red area often, yeah. there's more touchdowns to go around, and that's yeah. what's happening. And so if it slows down a little bit, that's just something that you got to deal with. But at the same time, what could the ceiling potentially continue to be? Right. It's not going to be 85 percent completion percentage or well, 82 and long like long term. We're, we're that's also not, talking about a team that we didn't come into this season praising all their parts and pieces. So as as, as the whole thing evolves, no, but we I, can really, you know, yeah. see this, see it potentially even getting even scarier and more dangerous. Like right now, your your second receiver is Diami Brown and the Luke dude McCaffrey, Zacaf, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus. This is mod. Over the years, you've heard me say that I'm I'm a big team morale guy. I'm a I'm a big momentum guy. And I'm a big team morale guy. And like the Washington defense right now that is playing well above anything that you could have expected out of them is goes right back to that. The boys are getting a fucking half a rest in between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, the, but the time of possession for sure. That plays right, And you put, you're putting str- like the offense is then putting stress on the opposing. There you go. You know, offense to say, mm-hmm. Hey, we got to, we got to go score. score, but also everybody's buying, everybody's bought in on the quarterback. Right. Right. So that, that goes back to help Brian Robinson too. So changes everything. All right. 
we're going way too long here, but I did I, I did want to talk about one thing because I want to throw Jonathan Brooks up in here, and he hasn't even played it down. But from what we're seeing from Chuba Hubbard, you know, I kind of have David Montgomery, Ramondre Stevenson, and Chuba Hubbard kind of hanging out here on the fringe of the outside of here. Mm-hmm. Of I don't think they're quite on the level of there. They can score the same points. Chuba has been absolutely outstanding. He's top of the success rate uh, from Marcus Mosher's chart there. Um, and I just I, I think that bodes really well for Jonathan Brooks. Shows you with an Andy Dalton level quarterback how well the running game can work with Canales and what he's trying to do. Yeah. So if you can get Jonathan Brooks, who I think most people would say is at least as talented as Chuba Hubbard. I mean, you could say what you want about Chuba. That's a two thousand yard rusher in fucking college. True. Um, True. You know. So Jonathan Brooks. You know. I know some people are like he's way back. Like, but Chuba was. <laughs> filthy yeah um it just took a minute again patience is the theme of the episode i think i'm going to slot jonathan brooks in here but what do we do with chuba hubbard right now and like how do you feel about what's what do you do with this david montgomery stevenson kind of chuba hubbard area then maybe you don't agree with all those guys being in there but i got another name for there but i think the chuba part is he's probably the one guy who's so far that the by far the cheapest the most attainable you know if he's on your team just enjoy it if he's on your team and Jonathan Brooks is not, you just when Jonathan Brooks steps back onto the field, you could probably sell Hubbard to the Jonathan Brooks guy and get something kind of decent for it. No doubt about it, Chuba's shown that he's an NFL running back. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that's kind of where you're going with that. I think he, either he's a you know a, a, he's in the last year of his deal. Yeah, he's he's pro- he, he could potentially. I don't think the people. I don't think a lot of teams are going to be like lining up to say, "Hey, this guy's our unquestioned starter," but. Every time he's gotten a chance, he's done well. And outside of the first three games of his rookie year, which is a, a lot of problems for a lot of rookies, you know. Yeah, I mean, he, when he like he's been underperforming, it's because their team sucks. I yeah. mean, and then you get any competent play and look at how good Chuba's been. Mm-hmm. He's in the last year of his deal. I don't know exactly where that lands him. He's gonna, you know, somebody's gonna want to be somebody's gonna be interested in him. So he's gonna get an opportunity, and he's playing really well. So, I mean, he's I think he's twenty five years old right now. Yeah, 25. He'll be 26 at the end of the season. Does he make the end of this thing for you? Would you rather have Monty or Stevenson or Chuba? Or Can I insert my name here? Sure. I, I'm Derek sure. Henry. Yeah. Uh, I know that coming into the year, you and I both, we just you know completely threw Derek Henry down the line. Because well, I mean, if you're going to throw Derek Henry in there, you got to throw Alvin Kamara in there. Mm. For sure. But at the same time, like there's just like, Dar- I'd rather have Derek Henry than Pacheco. Like I mean, I like I got no chance. Yeah, not, dude. not in the running back rankings. This is a does, thirty-year-old, thirty-one-year-old running. It doesn't. Back. He's not eating until three o'clock in the afternoon. He's yeah, fasting. I like just, his his I'm, diet. I can't rank any of those older guys in this list right now. They, not, they've got to be. I didn't take any of those older guys. I took Derrick Henry. I took the thoroughbred. I took yeah. the guy who's taking care of his body. That's still a pass I, for me. Well, okay, but I'm saying I don't. I don't want it to be a pass for me anymore. Yeah. I'm saying I'm. I'm all right. You. You're you, getting I, on too late, is what I'm telling you. You woke me up. <laughs> no, no, no. But no. But like, dude, you can't give me. You can't give me one more year after this. I mean, that's all I need, if bro. You, yeah, I mean, look, if, look at if him. You He's leading the league these, in if, yards and so touchdowns. Then if all these guys, great offense, all these guys should be able to give you one more year. But they're not giving you Derrick Henry numbers. Alvin Kamara, absolutely. Is. Yeah, yeah, Alvin Kamara for sure, for sure. But I'm saying like, I saw I saw a tweet or something that said like Derrick Henry is the is when perfect genetics meets like perfect work ethic or something. And I think like Alvin his, Kamara might be like a year and a half his, younger his than Derrick Henry. Work ethic. His work ethic and his diet, like his routine, like he's just all in on being the best he can be. He just joined a list that includes Ladanian Tomlinson and Emmitt Smith and the, sure. the other three best running backs ever. About and and Adrian Peterson about like had the fastest to ten thousand yards and a hundred touchdowns or something, something, something. So like, I mean, I you know a year or two more of Derrick Henry, just the the, the top end points. Sure, Kamara's there with his receptions too. Like I and and in this, in this new Saint scheme, Kamara's out there cutting people up. You can put him in there too. Like I was just, there's nothing. And I don't mean to like be bashing Pacheco, but he's like that name, you know, like that area where it before season we were kind of, you know, what do we do with these guys right here? And, you know, kind of re- the replaceability with them. Like Derrick Henry, I mean, shame on me, you know, like I'm, I don't shame w- on everyone. The point to take away from this is that, you know, running back rankings for dynasty are kind of pointless. Like what, position is your team in you know if you're competing right now i'd absolutely move pacheco well, for that, henry and, and kamar and you probably couldn't get him for, that's, for pacheco, that's kind of my point right? is like yeah I, i'm not i'm not ranking derrick henry in there if i got a good team i'll go buy derrick henry if i'm in a startup i'm not taking derrick henry anywhere near where i'm taking almost any other p- player that we li- had on this list 
because I don't, number one, I don't need to. And number two, like this thing, he could be 31 at the end of this year. This thing could fall apart. It, next year, we could be like, what the hell is wrong with Derrick Henry? Yeah, well, we've been saying just, that for a while. It doesn't sure, look like he's we've slowing been down saying at all. It, we've been it? saying it for a while, but it, it happens. He's having his best it happens, season. It happens quick. He's right? on the best offense he's ever he, played he's with. He went from being the Certainly. focal point of everything that was involved with the Titans to being sure. like, Oh shit! The Ravens have Derrick Henry. Yeah, yeah. No one else paid this man. Yeah. Oh shit! The thing that you do need to take into consideration is is when a good team got against him and he was the focal point. He was rendered useless against the uh, the Chiefs in Game One when you played a good. You know. Yeah. And, then you went and you ran. Two, you ran. You, you had some touchdowns. You had right? two great games here against the Bills and the the. Bengals, Cowboys, who we know don't have a defense, they at can't all. stop the run. And, right. But uh, but that's what he's going to dash you, he's right? I'm, you. And I'm not I'm not down. Like I think Derrick Henry and the Ravens are, are great. That's what they're going to do. I'm, I, what I'm saying is is I'm not disputing how good Derrick Henry is, and that I will put him on a team that I know I'm winning on. I'm just not. And the, I I guess the purpose of kind of rankings in this situation is is to kind of give you how this would break down somewhat on if you were restarting a new team yeah. or trading for sure. for value a little bit here sure. and all of those things i think derrick henry would be a little bit further down this list for the most part now if you were in season right now and you lost pacheco and, and somebody was on the rebuilder and, and traded pacheco for henry i think that's a fine deal for you at that mm -hmm. point yeah, if you're yeah. if you're competing I right so, so, that, sure. so that's to your point of saying that it doesn't really make all that much sense it's kind of just giving you an idea of where you should be at valuing these guys in a startup and in your leagues that are running currently like Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones, James Conner, those guys, those, those guys are all on or should be on teams that are going to be competitive this year because they're, those guys are completely agree. Absolutely crushing points. So uh, uh, everything you said makes complete sense that like I, it's still, it is week five and it's almost over, but all of the uh, contabulations are still under week four. And Derrick Henry is the number four overall player through four weeks because passing has been down and quarterbacks have been struggling. Right. Like lit, he's the number one running back. He's the fourth overall player. Yeah. And that's just how good, like he got on a better offense and he is, he has been in his yeah. entire, for his entire Bar career, almost the offense by himself. Barclay and now he's and Kamara on the have more points than he does through uh, well, he's got he's got two more points or four more points than Kamara, and Kamara doesn't have points in this. We're playing that that, tonight, I'm, that yeah. I'm looking at, and Barkley had a bye. Monday night, right? But just one last point, and to bring it back around because Casey already I think led off with it. Just because these guys are getting old doesn't mean you have to move them. You know, yeah. Just let's all keep a good on player where on your team. team is right. Well, sure, but man, I'm our listeners are like not always rebuilding. I feel like our rebuild videos don't do as well as other channels, which are always just rebuilding. Everybody wants to rebuild. You get in a Twitter league. Everybody, it's the cool thing to do is rebuild. Sure. But we want to win over here and I'm going to keep my good players. I don't care if they're getting older. Like, and, and the guy might die on my team. Crazy. Well, I mean, oh, if well, you, my bad. that goes back into shows you that know? we've had about really no doing a self scout. Like if your team, if you're like had some bad luck, and you just yeah. didn't, you know, if you're if no, you I've, just I've, had a bad season and you got a good team, you're not rebuilding. I've gone like from if, a year to year with it with one team and 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 went like, oh, that that was fucking terrible. To what am I doing? Is this team? And then the next year, you're right, you're top three in points, you're in the yeah. playoffs, and I almost did nothing. Yeah, right? and but you know, if you if you just happen to have that bad startup where you're like, ah, oh, I picked some bad players in that startup, so my team's not great and I'm not going to win anytime soon. You should be selling Derrick Henry. But if you have a good team and you had some injuries or this or that, like you got to self scout whether you know if you're buying or selling, uh, or just holding. There's nothing wrong with holding either way. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I just, I just, I'm gonna put a little bit more value in my Derrick Henry I, I and Alvin Kamara. It's a great comp there. I think it's a very fair uh, conversation of uh, what you're doing because I, I got all the olds pulled to the side. Well, I've been leading the charge on the best asset available. Mm -hmm. You know, I made that up. So like it's you know but like and it's so for two years in a row that's but my I want to get the pieces the best assets that I can and I'm gonna form my team from there and move forward and have a good time with a lot of young assets that are hopefully scoring points but you know the Derrick Henrys of the world and the Mike Evans of the world and it's just made me like all right well let me just at least let's maybe some of these guys can help me win at the same time and still be good assets somehow today you could sell Mike Evans for more than you could sell him for two years ago because it just had a little slump issue with the Bucks and then. All of a sudden, because Tom Brady retired and everything was over and he was old. But then, you know, yeah. Baker Mayfield comes well, in you, and catches his groove. And uh, now Mike Evans is you know, continuing to do his thing. I'm just I'm going to do I'm still going to do best asset available in this year. This coming out of this year, when we go in our offseason talks, I'm going to have to blend a little bit of best asset and best 
not best player, but best asset, best point scorer, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to have to refine my tool. And that's what it's all about, man, being fluid and trying to learn and trying to be better. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think, you know, we need to get out of here and get to the next <laughs> show. The FF out of here. We talked uh, about a lot of running backs. We're good. But, you know, we, we get a lot of conversation about, you know, everyone is always, it's, you know, we get to a point and you're rebuilding or doing whatever. And it's all, you know, you're always about the value of and winning the value and the and, uh, value this and value that. And at some point you have to shift your mindset from absolutely having to win every value and, and getting the value and worrying about did this guy max out on value. And it's like, sometimes that shit's okay. And you have to turn to, I'm scoring points because I'm trying to win. Yep. Fuck the value at this point. Mm-hmm. Like the whole point of this thing is to put yourself in position. How, how much value do you have? Do you put in winning? And which is kind of the whole crux of what you're saying, mm-hmm. Big Co. Is is you know shifting over to like, hey, yeah, you don't want to buy week four. You don't want to go buy Derrick Henry right now on an on a maybe iffy team, right? You know, you, if you if you're not if you can't win, you got no business buying Derrick Henry. I mean, if you know you anything could happen and, and you could get hurt and you you know and, and I just I feel like everybody's so scared to be caught quote unquote holding the bag on a guy and you know but it's it's all right man like it's okay I'll and let him die just, on my team we have I we were just talking to some Keenan one Allen's of the guys dying on my in, team, in the know. Patreon the other day and and I I forget what exactly the context of the trade was but I basically said the same thing at some point we got to stop worrying about winning winning the value and squeezing the most value out of everything and go back to like. Let me get these points, mm-hmm. right? Like I I've think been he was trying tr- to trade Aaron Jones for seasons now. It feels like because and then I was not I was discouraged coming into this year with the Vikings offense not having Kirk Cousins. Couldn't really get the right value for him. I was like, all right, I'll just hold him. And now, boom, you know. And I I'm think, a competitive team, so like he's probably gonna die. I'm gonna want that next year too. Why I think would I? he was worried about giving up Drake London and Flowers or Drake London and something like that for Gibbs. And he mm-hmm. was like, I feel like I'm just not getting all the value. And Gibbs is already at his top value. And I'm like, yeah, Bo, he's at his top value. <laughs> he's fucking scoring. The Actually, top value is he's scoring it points. Up. It could go up a it little bit. Up. But like he's scoring you points. Drake London obviously can still go up. And he just had another great oh, game. Oh, yeah. Sure. Right? And it, but it's like, and you're worried about leaving some meat on the bone of the value. And it's like, Bo, just get Gibbs. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. you, you, he listed, he has, he's got every good wide receiver possible. And they're all under the 24 years old. It's like, all right, man, like you go might quote Gibbs. unquote lose the value on drake london and flowers long term potentially on the points in your lineup from those two guys but you don't have your running back room is nowhere near what gibbs could give you week to week year to year and that's what's going to help you win championships is, is just putting another elite you can't start you're already starting neighbors and you had marv and you had all the good young guy jamar chase and you're already start. you can't start london and flowers <laughs> yeah. every week anyway but you sure as hell could start Gibbs, because you had like one good running back, right? Yep, and so, it. anyway, let's get out of here. Be sure you uh, keep it locked and loaded. Five star review. Subscribe on the YouTube if you haven't already, so you can get these videos coming right to your little fingertips. Comment what you like, what you didn't like here. Tell us the order that we have. And no tell way us you can have Kyron at the how, top. How dumb we are. Too low. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't. When I give you a tier, I'm not. Doesn't even matter who's really at the top. Yes, for me, it does. Potentially, I just Casey. put Kyron as the one one because I knew that people wouldn't like Gotta him. get him. And I, he's been fucking awesome. So suck it, haters. All right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>